Pain comes in many forms, but no matter how severe, pain can have a significant impact on people's ability to do things that most of us take for granted, like concentrating, having meaningful relationships, and even moving around. And the effects aren't only physical. Pain can lead to depression, anxiety, and high stress levels. But according to Dr. Kelly McGonigal, changing the brain may be an effective strategy for coping with pain, and it may not be as difficult as you might imagine. Here, she explains how to use mindfulness to rewire the brain and better cope with pain. There's some really fascinating research coming out looking at um, using mental strategies to help people relieve uh, both acute pain and chronic pain. And this comes from an understanding of the different systems that are involved in, in pain in the brain. So obviously, areas of the brain that are related to the body are involved to sensation. Um, but very interestingly, there is an area of the brain called the interior cingulate cortex that seems to be very, um, very much a part of the pain response system in slightly mysterious ways. Um, and researchers at Stanford decided to try teaching people how to control this region of the brain through neurofeedback. Um, this is a, a lab that's led by Sean Mackey um, at Psychiatry and in Pain Management at Stanford. And um, he was able to use real-time fMRI feedback. So, you know, we talk a lot about brain scans, and there's actually technology that allows you to show people what's happening in their brains almost real-time, a few seconds delay. And uh, his research group brought people into the lab who had chronic pain and showed them this region of the brain that seems to be so important for both the experience of pain and also the regulation of pain so that we, we can cope with it better. Showed them this area of the brain and showed them the activation and gave them a few different mental strategies to try to control this region of the brain. And these strategies are actually, they're pretty similar to uh, mindfulness strategies and reappraisal strategies. So one strategy would be to practice attentional flexibility. So this is maybe a pain um, patient who has chronic back pain, and they may be asked to really pay attention to the pain in their back. What does it feel like? Now can you shift your attention to something else? Could you choose to shift your attention to a different sensation or to a different uh, image in your mind um, and practice that flexibility of going back and forth, something that you might practice in a mindfulness training? Uh, they also were given uh, cognitive reappraisal strategies like to imagine that the pain that you're feeling, uh, although it may be intense, is actually safe. Right, to try to take away the, the feeling of danger that we often layer on top of physical sensation that increases our pain. Um, and so given strategies like that, um, to imagine that it getting less intense or more intense, um, just different ways of, of paying attention, but importantly, not distracting yourself. Right? It really wasn't about trying to get away from the pain. And people were allowed to use whatever strategy worked best. And uh, everyone was able to basically control this region of the brain that's so... Um, affects our experience of pain. They were able to learn it in a single session. And um, not only were they able to decrease their experience of pain in the laboratory session, but there was a dramatic decrease in their lived experience of pain after they learned these techniques and got the, the neurofeedback. Mindfulness is such an effective strategy for training the brain to cope with pain now and in the long term. And that's not the only thing it can do for people.